Okay. So go ahead and uh, interrupt me anytime. You know, unmute yourselves and come in with questions. But we're going to continue talking about our poster design. So, so far, we have designed our spot illustration. We've decided through blocking sketches how, um, what text we're going to use and some played with some different ways thinking about how that text can float above, below, to the side, or on top of our spot illustration in a poster format, right? And so my blocking sketch that I actually like best is this one, just really straightforward. And then that helps me decide, and this is through PhotoP, which I have open here, and you can find under links in the Canvas course. So this was kind of my blocking sketch. Remember that I wanted to find a typeface that worked. So I went to this site, which is in the assignment sheet, defont.com, and searched for different uh, typefaces I thought might be interesting, right? When I found one I thought was interesting, I would do a screen grab of it. And that's what you see here. And what we're looking for is not a typeface that does all the work for us, because all of the examples I'm going to show you of kind of inspirational posters, they don't just take a, a, a given typeface as is. They always modify it. But we want something to modify from. So this is what I started with. It's called hand form. And then I, I imported that into the computer as a, a TTF file. They'll, they'll be uh, usable as either OTF files or TTF files, open type files or true type files. And then within either Photoshop or within, we'll figure out which one it is, or within PhotoP, whether you're doing browser-based or whether you're doing app-based, I was able to get that typeface to work within it. Right? You can also get it to work within the vector program, but that's only going to matter and you're going to see that's only going to matter once we use um, Illustrator. Because type is always a vector. What am I looking for? So because letter forms can always be um, made within these imaging programs to any resolution, it doesn't make sense to build it first in a vector program and then rasterize it to something larger. You can just treat it like a vector shape right within the the raster program. But when we modify it, we have to rasterize it, right, in order to add things to it. So let me see where I started adding. Yeah, so you'll see I have the actual uh, text file there. That means that it's still a vector. If I double click, it means I can still play with it, which means I can play with the spacing in between the letters by adding a space and adjusting the size of that space. And if there are any misspellings, I could play with that. You know, so there's a lot of benefits to keeping it as a type vector. You can see the extra space I added around the I. That's called kerning. Um, I can't actually make the P and the A any closer within PhotoP. But I'll show you some of the advantages of doing this within Photoshop or within Illustrator. So if I know that's the type I want, and I know it's going to go on top of my spot illustration, then I can bring my spot illustration in and bring it underneath the type. right? And then, I can, and I'll, I'll uh, dim it a little bit so you can see it more clearly. And then what I can do, and this is all at a, at least 10 by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch, because you want to make sure you're at a high enough print quality before you rasterize any type, right? 
So then what I can do is I can duplicate the type layer. So I'm in Photo P, so that's Control J instead of Command J. And then I can right click on it just like we do in Photoshop and rasterize it. And then once it's rasterized, I can add stuff to it. You know, like the serifs. And kind of uh, build it up. Also, when it's rasterized, I can do little additional space adjustments, right? Now they're just pixels, really clean pixels because it's a high resolution. But I can then nudge letter forms forward and back so I can move that P closer to that A. Now kerning, for you aspiring graphic designers, kerning, the space between letters, incredibly important. And the way to think about it this is getting a little typography nerdish, but it's important. Uh, I'll do it on a layer on top. But the way to think about the spacing between your letters, and it works best with uh, capital letters, is draw it with a bright color here, a new layer. Okay, is to think of each letter as being suspended in a glass of water. So this is the glass of water, and the P is suspended in it, right? Now think of all the water. It's the same glass of water for every letter. So the T is in the glass of water. The N is in the glass of water. Even the I is in the glass of water, even though the I takes up so much less space within that glass of water. Now to make the spacing feel to the, the human eye as really comfortable, what you have to do is think of all the, the water that's around that image. So it's the negative space. If I color it in for the P, you know, it fills up all of that, and it fills up all of this, and it fills up a little narrow channel behind it. right? But the rest of that space is taken up by the P. The T has a whole lot of open space, right? There's a lot of water that it displaces, but it also leaves a lot. The eye almost displaces no water, takes up almost no space. So with something like the eye, you want more space between it and the other letters. Because what you want is basically for the same amount of water to be present around each letter. The letters take up different amounts of space, but the negative space around them you want to feel equal. So that's a way to think of kerning, of spacing. Remember, when the computer spaces your letters for you, it just has a block for that vector shape and it just puts it really close, which is why there's no way to get this P closer to the A without it overlapping the A. Right, so the, the closest they can get is like that. But that just doesn't look as pleasing as bringing the P in closer to the A. And with the I, the I doesn't need very much space at all according to the computer, so we had to space it out ourselves to make that feel more readable and more comfortable. Now, both the, the all three of these, the D, the O, and the N, they all take up a lot of space. So the computer does a pretty good job spacing those. But the T often you need to add a little bit more space around because like the I, it has a lot of negative uh, space around it. So once you feel like your spacing is, is good, that's the kerning. That makes a big difference. Come on, there we go. And just moving that P makes a big difference. Okay, in terms of serifs, the reason I want to add some decorative serifs is to make it feel just a little folksier, right? So I can keep doing that and I can just do it with my hard edge paintbrush at 100%, right? Everything I've been doing. And especially because I'm just using my trackpad, that's going to look kind of folksy.
Come on. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Yeah, remember the reason we deal with comp uh, compositing and all that layer work, even up to the animation at the beginning, is because layers are everything when you're dealing with raster programs. And you can fix little issues you see in whatever type that you're modifying. Now, if you use a modern type that's really, really clean, then you have to be really, really clean and deliberate with, with how you modify it. But I'm using a type that's not very clean. Look how bumpy that D is already. So that allows me to be a little bit more hand done. And this all goes back to what influences you. So this is just a really basic way. Once you've rasterized your type at a high resolution, this is how you can make it your own. And then the other way, of course, that I started this is I just transformed it. I, I stretched the type a little bit. And the reason you have to rasterize it instead of just painting on top of it is because you often have to move things around, like I did with the kerning, or you have to even cut away from the existing type design. And as a vector, you're not able to, to as a smart object vector, you're not able to edit it. But this allows you to do that once you rasterize. Okay, so basic enough, right? Once you're happy with your type, I'm going to do this really fast, and then I'm going to show you uh, the other features if you didn't have to do a browser base that you can take advantage of in Photoshop and in Illustrator. So I'm going to do it kind of quick first, like I'm doing uh, a free job for a friend's band using a hotel computer and only browser-based free programs like Photopea, right? So I could do this. And then, of course, because I have it on its own layer, I can add an offset to it to help it show up. So I double click and I'm going to add a stroke and I'm going to make that stroke white, just like we did for our spot illustrations, just like we did for our logos. Say OK, because I think it needs that kind of separation. I'm going to play with the spacing of it, right? Make it a little narrower. OK, then. I am going to add maybe a drop shadow to help separate it from the spot illustration behind it. So all of this is done in layer styles. And I, I do really appreciate how closely Photoshop uh, is laid out and works like, or I'm sorry, Photo P is laid out and works like Photoshop. So we can see it with the drop shadow, without the drop shadow, we can extend the spread of the drop shadow and the size so it shows up a little bit beyond just our our white offset stroke and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my spot illustration at full resolution so now you see that they're both showing up pretty well and so if you think okay that's working pretty well I like that type I like the spacing of the type I think it's pretty readable I'm going to go ahead and save it, save as PSD, right? It's at the right resolution. I haven't flattened anything. I have options. <laughs> now I'm ready to save the black version for my assignment, right? So what am I going to save to upload? I'm going to save my black type only. So I'm going to turn off everything else. Save this just as a PNG. So save your black type on its own. So out of photo P, I'm just going to say, and it has to be customized, right? So maybe it started with a typeface, but then I've customized it and made it my own. I stretched it. I added serifs. I've added a stroke. I've cleaned it up a little bit. I added a drop shadow. Uh, some of you will have to customize a lot. Some of you might make your own type completely. Some of I, some of you like me, will find a typeface that just kind of works, and you'll you'll customize it slightly. But even just adjusting the kerning is customizing. Then I'm going to let's see, export as a PNG because I want that transparency, right? 